Our next speaker is DT Cao from Caden. DT is currently a product engineering director in the digital and the sign off group of Caden's design system and focusing on Caden's 3D IC solution for the integrity. Uh, before that, he was at Caden's custom IC and the PCB group working on uh, Celsius thermal solver. DT has a lot of experience. Um, and the performed the physical analysis in uh, computer uh, computational simulation, product design in the fields of electronic packaging, semiconductor process equipment, and math. He previously worked for National Semiconductor uh, in the packaging technology group and applied materials in designing semiconductor components and equipment for a PVT and the ALD products. CT received a bachelor degree from a National Taiwan University, a master degree from a UT Austin in Boston Mechanical Engineering, and he got his PhD from a Stanford University in Aeronautics and Astronautics. I don't know what those are, but CT obviously have a very unique experience from the EDK, EDF perspective. Welcome, CT. Thank you. Thank you, Wei Kai. Um, yeah, it's really a privilege to be here today to meet all those new friends and old friends. Um, um, it's currently, I'm focusing on the 3DIC development in Cadence. So I presume everybody can see my screen, right? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Okay. Then I'll just start it. So today I'll spend about 20 minutes or so to um, focusing on the 3D heterogeneous integration of IC design. Um, to dive into that design and challenge to see how EDA tools can provide some solutions and to solve the problem to serve our customer. So I'll start it with a um, looking at why we want to have a 3D IC or 3D heterogeneous integration. Simply put, we cannot simply just follow the Moore's laws that uh, Jimmy already mentioned that um, the technical and economical require, we cannot just uh, follow that previous path. From the top, let me bring up my um, laser pointer. From the top, we see the radical limit. Radical limit is basically um, coming from the, um, the stepper, the lithography, right? The radical will be a, a, a region to basically create one die. So we have a, a physical limit of the radical size cannot be larger. And we, we also have a physical size limit of the die itself, like the transistor, the physical limit of that size. We all know that. We'll talk more about in the next slide. Then that all those consideration bring up the cost and yield consideration that uh, prevent us to go through the Moore's law, keep like a exponential. Actually, Mr. Gordon Moore's original paper in 1965, um, there's a combination of consideration of cost, yield, productivity, manufacturability, and the number of components on one single wafer that the prediction that curve coming up. Then in order to create a smaller phone factor to have our cell phone on our hand, definitely we need a thinner, smaller, then that consideration drive the 3D IEC development as well. On the other hand here, down there, the analog chips, the IO and memory, actually those area um, never have a fully benefit coming from uh, Moore's law development because they, their size or their uh, numbers just cannot, cannot follow the traditional or conventional uh, digital chip uh, trans, uh, progression. So all those considerations make the designer and the industry trying to find out a better way to have a small form factor, no, still can have a profitability, then to have all those chips come combined in a mix and match mode in a heterogeneous way. So that comes up with this uh, 3D IC and 3D heterogeneous integration. There are two factors, like we just mentioned at the physical limit. 
One is the Moore's laws kind of slow down, as we all know that. Then to go to the seven nanometer, the seven nanometer, five nanometer, three nanometer, two nanometer. Then this slide is coming from the AMD's uh, CEO, Dr. Lisa Su, is in the 19, 2019, it stopped at seven nanometer, but we know it keep going down, but the curve should be flat as we expected. So, well, when we go to one nanometer or two nanometer, basically we're talking about just a few layers of atoms, no matter it's copper, aluminum, tinitride, tantalum, nitride, for barrier, for tungsten, for plugs. So it, we just talk about you know, a few layers of atoms. So def definitely there's a physical limit in there. Secondly, as we just talk about there's a dye, for the dye size, there's a uh, radical limit. The radical limit is basically, um, is a limit of uh, the lithography stepper, as we mentioned before, and it's about 26 millimeter by 33 millimeter. So it's, it's a region about 858. So if we want to have an even larger dye, then all the lithography, the machines has to be redesigned, the optics, the lasers, everything there. So now an EUV machine is cost about $150 million. So, so that would be a, a kind of a hard limit there. So on one hand, we cannot have larger radical size. Then larger dye will have a lower yield. One region got the malfunctions, then you have to, throw, you have to we have to throw out every, the, the whole dyes. Now, on the other hand, we cannot go even smaller. So we come up, come into this dilemma. Then we also want to make profit. We want to keep the cost down, high performance. So naturally, people will think of, then we break up larger dye, make it small triplets, and put them together. So that comes with this 3D IC. Very naturally, if you have a very large 2D system on the chip, you have ABCDE regions, you have a long global wire, then we break it down. We, we break it into two dyes, stack them, stack them, stack up them together. Then we, we should have shorter wires, less power, higher performance, bandwidth, small profile, better yield. Well, great. Now things will be great. Let's go for it. Then you can see, you can, we can imagine in this pictures, the keyword there, I would say, is connection or connectivities. How do you connect them? Previously, you have a 2D looking from the top like GDS, or everything's 2D shapes. Then now you have the third dimensions, not just you have a neighbor left and right, you have a neighbor upstairs, downstairs. So connectivity, connection, to my opinion, will be the keyword of the keywords of 3D IC or heterogeneous integration. So then let's, let's dive into a little bit more about the connectivity. This picture comes from uh, Dr. John Lau's book. We can, see, we can see it's basically start from, we see the solder ball. Solder ball is shown here. Solder ball is a package connecting the PCB. PCB is not shown here. Typically solder ball pitch is about one millimeter. And the size you can see here is about 500 microns, 0.5 millimeter. Then you have a, uh, it's called C4 bomb. C4 bomb is a controlled collapsed chip connection for C stairs, so they call C4 bumps. So above the package substrate, you have the C4 bump. Below the package, you have the solder ball bump. Then they can connect to the PCB and they can connect to the uh, chips. Basically C4 bump previously was used for flip chips. So um, it just, you can, we can think of this first layer of uh, silicon like a flip chip. So there are two bumps, two connection, one to the PCB one to the uh, chip, the thin layer of the chip. But when, lay, when things go up or go smaller, we have this interposer. Interposer we can think of as a silicon, a, another piece of silicon. Then for interposer, you have a C4 bomb connecting to the uh, package substrate. You have the so we call micro bump connecting to the chip on the top, on top of it. Um, okay, by the way, I forgot to mention that a C4 bomb typically is 100 micron on the order of 100 micron in pitch and the size. Then you can imagine things get smaller and smaller. So the micro bomb is, will, will be above that interposer. So typically, um, it's a, a piece of silicon. It could be an organic 
Um, and for the micro bump is on the order, the size is on the order of a tenth of micron in pitch and or in size. And the micro bump is a, basically is a copper pillar solder. And its size, you can see in, inside this uh, interpose on the top, there will be four, typically there will be several layers of redistribution layer and they are long TSB penetrating through the interposer. Then even further up, we have, we have a wafer bonding we call hybrid bond. Hybrid bond. Then uh, in this picture, we have only one chip above the interposer, but just imagine you have the multiple chips stacking up together. Then between there, typically right now, the industry are using hybrid bond. And the size of hybrid bond um, is on the order of a tenth of micron. And it's um, no, less than that actually, is between one or two, or one or two ten right now. So when, when we see this, the size between small, uh, becoming smaller and smaller, then the connectivity, how to optimize the bump assignment will be critical to ensure we have a 3D IC uh, assembly working as, as designed. And on this pictures, I like to point out several uh, uh, aspects here is from the third dimension that, because we talk about 3D, right? We're coming from 2D to 3D. So you can see there's a plated through holes in the, in the typical package package substrate. This will be typical like uh, by, by the scales, one point, one point something uh, milli, uh, millimeter. It will be typical like uh, a PCB size. And, and this uh, chip size, it, it, by this picture is about 100. And by a memory size, memory devices, hybrid uh, HBM, that could be about 50 tens of micron. Then our device, our device actually just 5% to 10% overall silicon. That's why our TSV through silicon via actually is much, much, much longer than um, the cut via inside a device. Like say we have metal one to metal 20, then we have 19 via in between. Then the TSV, uh, it will be much larger or much longer than that. So that I just want to bring up some um, three dimensional um, perspective because um, usually when we, come up with a stack up from a, a PDK or from some information, we know that uh, the metal and via stack up actually just a few microns, but usually then typically for a chip um, is much thicker than the active device. Yeah, that's what I want to point it out. Okay, so this is a connectivity. Then let's go back, go into the packaging. 3D pack, there are two, two basically main direct, two direction of a 3D packaging. One will be the um, uh, package stack up, like you have a, a PCB, then you have a package stacking up. This will be a bottom up approach. You design the core logic, then you have the IO buffer to IO buffer to make to connect them. Now we have a multiple protocol to, to make a connection between the die. But in here, those package, this color picture, uh, picture you know, block shown here, our uh, package, is basically the timing closed and the sign off will be um, done for each die separately. T typically there's no concurrent design of those design. Then on the other hand, for 3D interactions, like we just mentioned, we have this bump, hybrid bump connection, basically it's a copper to copper bump then there, there will be no IO buffer between those die and macros. Basically, they stacking up in the third dimension, in the Z dimension, uh, dimensions. So we could do concurrent design and analysis, and it will be the timing-driven routing and assist uh, static timing analysis requirement for the design. Then the cross die and the cross chiplet routing, the resource resources could be shared, could be con considered concurrently in the Z direction. So this this hybrid bound die to die 3D interaction, we see it will be the mainstream going forward, but the 3D packaging will have their application as well in a different focus application, I would say. Heterogeneous integration actually leverage multiple package technology, as we know that um, 
the heterogeneous packaging is coming up, well, decades before from the multi-chip module system in package, then we migrate into interconnected bridge. There's so EMIP, EMIP embedded multi-chips interaction, uh, inter interconnect bridge uh, from Intel. Then we migrate into this uh, uh, fan out wafer level packaging, like the info wafer, info wafer level packaging. So we have this, our you know, fancy hand, handheld devices on our hand. Then we have the silicon stacking right now. We migrate, we marching into this system on a wafer era. Then this will be, um, so we can see from the past several decades, we have this uh, um, technology starting from package. Then we see the technology coming from the IC. Then so we, we march into this 3D IC. We want, we're trying to combine or take advantage of, of both sides. Then I like to mention some design challenge. First of all, 3D IC design, as uh, Jimmy has mentioned that the aggregation and the management, the die placement bump planning, um, we also see is a, will, will be critical for creating a connections. In the packaging term, one of the key, um, key <laughs> Challenge is the system, uh, the system on a on a chip, the team and the package team. Pre previously, they working pretty much separately. Um, even the language are different. Right? One side is a pin port term terminal, then the, the other side will be bump pad pass pass stack. Uh, even that terminology will bring in confusion. Now, but uh, we have seen. Industry, industry and all the customers, those groups that have to work together because everything will converge together. And database will be another issues, um, the challenge to overcome from the 3D design point of view. Analysis point of view is another uh, key uh, directions. I believe the uh, uh, next speaker will, will address more on that. Um, physical analysis, what we talk about, say, listed here, we need, we ha will have a thermal analysis, even mechanical deformation, warpage analysis, signal integrity, power integrity, uh, electro migration interference. And all those analysis has to be included into the design, not in a siloed way. It had to be integrated in a early stage of the design. Then it will, it will, the interdi connectivity validation of the system level will, will be critical to achieve a meaningful uh, system level analysis that will be together um, affecting, multi factors will be affecting each other's. So current industry solutions, um, not, I'm not mentioning every company like from Cadence, Synopsis, all, all the EDA tools, we're trying to overcome this seemingly disjointed or point solution based um, operation. So we want to create it a holistic um, one um, carpet or one platform, one stop for the customer um, to have a um, not just sign off, but also exploratory early analysis. Then so we can avoid to have this uh, um, to cause this a costly and not, not coming from the early envelope of consideration. If we consider an individual diet, it will be easy to have a, um, um, a very expensive and malfunction uh, re results coming out. So again, this digital designer for the 3D IC design flow, we have to combine like from the digital designer, analog designer, packaging designer, sign off engineer, all those analysis engineer coming up into this common platform, then we have considered all those mixed signal packaging, early design, sign off, all those com coming into a multi-engineering discipline methodology. Then we have to combine SOC, chiplet, packaging design methodology together. This will be the main challenge to make this approach unique, I would say, from EDA industry, but because it's not, it's not point tool anymore, but it's not 
put all those points to it in a common bin either. We have to make it work together. Then one side is coming from, from the package, as I mentioned, board and package decades ago. The other direction coming from the chip IC designer, then from the foundry driven uh, PPA, power, power performance and area. From the OSAT, OSAT uh, point of view, it will be this size, weight, and power. So this two flows, two flow meaning a, a, a conversion together to come up with the IC packages system working, that those approach will be working for our customer to create a holistic solutions. So to conclude, this will be my uh, last page. I want to borrow the Star Trek slides here. We, we really going into a um, new next frontier, I would say, for 3DIC. Once, one point is this three pillar I just mentioned for 3DIC, 3D design, 3D implementation, meaning laid out, how to wiring it to create a place and route, to have analysis. We'll keep creating challenge and from the industry, from our customer to demand fast paced development and realization. Secondly, the boundary between the ICE design and package PCB design become blurry. So for that interposer or package substrate or, or, or chip stack up, basically you can, we can think of it as like a PCB and a PCB package and chip just shrink maybe 100 times smaller. But, but package and IC, they have still have their own focus application spaces. By this, mean, by this, what I mean is not every chip is a digital chip. They also have a analog chips like for the automotive applications because we need uh, um, um, there's a vibration, heat consideration. So wire bonding package still there and still needed to stack up die together, but may not take a IC designer point of view. So a EDA tool has to be, my point, has to be flexible, to be adapted to the environment and to be modulized. Then just like we can connect them together based on their function, no matter is place and route, no matter is planning based on the CAT or analysis, it could, it should, um, it should come out of a point to region, uh, uh, regime, not just creating API. They have to think about their neighbors, just like a single chip, chipless has to think of their neighbors chipless. So together, then we can provide a, a real useful solution for 3D IC for design implementation and analysis. Yeah, this will conclude my 20 minutes uh, uh, sharing about 3D IC um, design. So um, I'll talk to um, everybody then, you know, discuss more in the panel section, I would say. Yeah, thank you. All right, thanks, CP. Um, very cool to see the uh, analogy to the front the next frontier. Yeah, yeah I really like it. Is that Star Trek? That's yeah, Star Trek. That's I said. I, I borrowed that line. I right, like right. it. <laughs> Apparently, Star Trek and Star Wars, depending <laughs> on who you talk to, uh, you should not mix them together. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm sure we will come back to it during the panel discussion. This is definitely one of the focus areas. Yeah. Uh, All right. Thanks a lot. Um,